Good morning, this is Andy Shapers with Acuity. Thank you for attending our MNR, MRL webinar this morning. We know you're busy, we appreciate your time. We're going to keep this introductory webinar to half an hour or less. So this will be a quick overview of our MRL technology that's built into Team Center. <clears throat> Uh, what I have on the screen right now is a client for Team Center. This is a way then to view or interact with the data that we have in our Team Center database. And I know some of you aren't really familiar with Team Center, so I'll do, just do a quick overview of this client and then we'll get to the MRL portion. So if we look over on the left hand side here, we see some history of other items I've been working on previously, items I currently have open. And then I've got some buttons that allow me to get to different perspectives in Team Center. And these are different functions that I want to perform or different ways that I want to search on or view the data that's in Team Center. In the middle pane, we see the objects that I'm currently working on or have open. And then there's parameter data or viewing data off to the right for those objects. Also up in this banner, you see that I am currently logged in as tool admin 01. That means that I have uh, the rights to create and edit tooling. Uh, there are other uh, roles that you can have inside Team Center. For instance, uh, an admin might be able to uh, actually set up the way tools are created or uh, change templates, things like that. And a programmer, is going to have a, also a different role. They're not going to be able to uh, create or change tools, but they're going to be able to access those tools and use them in their programs. So here in my team center, uh, just a quick note about how our objects are set up. I've got a file, and if I look on the back page here with NX, you see that uh, 048 is just a very simple part model. Uh, so that's what it looks like in NX and in Team Center. Uh, we see some objects associated with that. For instance, the slash A indicates that this is Rev A. So I'll close that up. And if I had other revisions, they would fall below Rev A here. But we have just the, the one revision right now. So the other objects inside uh, relate to the NX file itself. And you see a little icon off to the side here. That indicates that that file is currently checked out and open. And of course, we just saw that it's open on, in NX there on the back screen. So it's a, it's a lot to go through, but uh, uh, Team Center is always then giving you feedback and information about the, the data uh, that you have in, in Team Center, and it's being updated dynamically as you do your work. Now, let's make our, our first stop now in exploring MRL. We're going to go to classification. Our goal with MRL then is to pr provide you with all of the components that make up a tool assembly and then allow you to create those assemblies, manage those assemblies, both the graphics that represent the shape of your tool, but also the parameters that are required to go out to the shop floor or to the programmer so that they can create those programs. Let's look at that now. I'm gonna start expanding this and we see the different things that we can classify here within the resource manager. Now let's go into tools specifically and talk more about what I mean. If I go into components then and uh, milling, let's look at uh, some solid milling cutters. So if I expand this and we see these subcategories for our, our end mills. Now if I uh, click here and hit select, it kind of moves our focus off to the right hand side and here I can hit search and you see that uh, there are 13 total end notes that it found in this category. If I now click on the table, those 13 are listed and I can see all of the parameters that are associated with that end mill. Let's give that one more try because there's some other uh, search functions that we can apply to these components. So now I'll go into our inserts and I might be interested in square inserts, so I'll select here. So by drilling down then, I get from 39 to nine, but there's more that we can do besides just drilling down. Here in the search area, uh, if I know something about the insert I'm looking for, I can type in that information. So here I'll select uh, under clearance angle, I'll say, well, I know that the insert I'm looking for has a 
a, a 15 degree angle. So let's search on that. And that got me from nine down to two. So now when I go to the table, I see only those two that meet both criteria of being a square insert and having a 15 degree relief angle. So those are some techniques that you can use in searching on your components that uh, I really help you keep things organized and reduce the time that you spend looking for things. Now, we've talked about components, but also in classification, we can store assemblies. And, and we'll just go into one area here. Of course, we handle both milling and turning assemblies. For, for our quick, quick demo today, we're just going to focus on milling. So uh, if I go into face mills and then face mills uh, indexable, you see that there's a, a total of five assemblies there. And when we search on that, um, we can then go to the table and select the, a, a face mill that's already been created as an assembly. And here we see uh, not only the parameters for that face mill, but an actual graphical image of what that face mill looks like. This face mill has been built in the resource manager and that's where we're going to go now. We're going to show you how to take these components and actually create the assemblies here in Team Center. Okay, so now I've switched perspectives. I've left classification and you see now I'm in resource manager. I'd like to, well, before we begin, you know, here's uh, something that's already open that I've been working on. It's another face mill. Um, I'll collapse this so that we can see the, uh, the larger view here. Uh, we're looking at parameters here on the left side, but over on the right side, as soon as it updates, you'll see that we'll get some uh, graphical information about this tool also. So we want to create our, our own resource. So, so let's go up here to create a new resource. And I'll have it automatically assign a number. And so this is going to be uh, the ID of our face mill will be 50. Okay, so that's updated now, and we've got um, a pretty much a blank screen. We, you know, we got some basic information in here, but not too many parameters. So I'll type in something quickly for our description. But it's at this point then that we want to start adding our own components. So I'll right click and choose add component, and now we're back in a familiar area. This is the, the classification again. So I want to start with my uh, holder. So let's expand that, and I know it's an HSK. And here in my table for HSK holders, I've got a total of 18. And let me just double check. <coughs> but I believe, yes, this is the one we want. So I'll click OK, and that's now added here to my uh, the tool that I'm building in Resource Manager. Next, let's right click, and we'll add a component to that holder. Oh, and I should point out that it, you know as it updates, we're actually seeing uh, that holder appear here, the graphical image, along with any parameters that are uh, necessary for it. Okay, let's work our way down. The next thing we want to put on is uh, the arbor for our face mill. So we'll select here. This brings up the search window again. <clears throat> There's only 15, so let's just hit search and go to our table. And let's see, I'm looking for this guy right here. So 
I click OK, and it prompts me, you know, where do I want to connect this to the holder? These coordinate systems are how we stick one component onto another, and it becomes really important. You'll see in a minute when we start putting the inserts in. All right, so here's our arbor, and let's add a classified component to the arbor. Now we're going back to that square insert area where we were looking earlier. And here's the insert we're looking for. There are eight inserts. We're going to start putting them in basically one at a time here. Now I'm going to, before I place the other inserts, so I'm going to switch to show graphics. And this will show the tool in its current state. So you can see I've got one insert here. We give you the flexibility to individually put inserts at each location. Uh, you might a ha imagine a situation where you've got a slab mill with three or four rows, but you only want to populate the bottom two. And I think I messed that one up. Let's, there we go, to two. It's working our way down here. Oh, from I, I don't know. Okay, two more to put in there. And if you're looking off to the side there, you should be able to see those as they're uh, being graphically inserted. Okay, so graphically, that completes our cutter. Let's switch back though to looking at our classification properties because we've got some more work to do here. Now, one of the challenges that we need to solve is that we want to define our cutter from the assembly level and have all those parameters available, but many of the parameters that are important to us are actually down at the insert. The insert radius, the rake angle, is it coded or uncoded, things like that. Here's how we deal with that problem. I'm going to say I want to propagate values from the insert up to the top level. So now when I save and then reopen, you'll see that those values have been propagated. And as we uh, select our top level, many of these areas that were blank previously will now be filled out. So let me just give that a minute to kind of catch up. And I'll start scrolling down and you see that now most of this is filled out for us. Now we do have a few other parameters that we need to type in. Uh, for instance, the, the length here is 52.2, and we'll say that our cutting length is the same as our uh, maximum depth of cut. And here we need to tell it where to get the number of flutes from. Well, that's just our, our face effective, not the periphery for, for this mill. Now, there certainly are a lot of other things that we, parameters we could put in. Not all of those are necessary. If we uh, hit this button here, you'll see that it will tell us in bold which parameters are important for NX cam. Uh, there is something else that we can do, though. We can do a tool check. So I'm going to save this tool. And then here I'll uh, check tool attributes. And it tells us that the tool is OK which indicates that we've got enough parameters here to, to actually create the tool. 
So at this point, everything we've been doing is on the team center side. We don't really have anything yet that we can use in the rest of our process. And it's at this point that we're gonna make that transition. So I'll choose create update NX tool file. And, and here I have control over uh, what I might wanna do. For instance, I might say, well, I don't really need to write uh, NX part attributes. These are things like tracking points or whatever. And I don't need to create the spinning geometry right now. So let's click OK. And in the background, it's doing a number of things. Uh, but the, the three things that are probably the most important to us here are, uh, coincidentally, three things that nobody in the shop ever wants to do. Uh, we've created a setup sheet. We've actually created the graphical representation of the tool that we can use in NX. And we've made a library entry that the programmers can see in NX so that they can retrieve the parameter data for that tool. Let's go back to my team center and have a look at this guy. So we'll send it to my team center. And here's our tool with just a rev A. And I wanna click on the drawing here. And uh, actually, I, th I think we're just gonna open this guy in NX. Let me look at the summary first. So you see a summary page and here is our, our tool setup sheet. So if we open this in NX then, and go to drafting, uh, you see it's just a, an NX drawing sheet. So at this point, um, I do have manual control over this. I can fix some of these hmm. balloons if I want to, change the position of things, or it, if I need to, for the guys out on the shop floor, you know, I can uh, place an additional dimension in here. And then I can just save this file and close it, and then it's it's available to me. <clears throat> okay, so that's our setup sheet uh, created via te a template that you can customize. Now let's go uh, uh, back to the resource manager. Uh, another question people often have is, well, once you've created that, what if you need to make an edit? Uh, what if you've got to change something there? Well, uh, that you actually do have full control over that as well. So let's go back to the resource manager. <clears throat> and at this point, I can reopen this face mill and make any changes to these parameters that I want to. And then at that point, I can just go back and uh, create the tool. And so uh, if I change my mind and say, well, you know, this time I also want the spinning geometry, I, I can click here. <clears throat> so it goes through that process again. And now we have an updated tool. Let's open the tool itself in NX. I mentioned the uh, spinning geometry. I want to explain exactly what that is. If I go to my uh, machine tool builder, we can see those objects. So you can see the, it's a little hard with the graphics here, but uh, there's our cutting spun. So it's actually taken the insert shape and spun it. And here's our non-cutting spun. And the advantage of doing that is you get an exact representation of how this tool is going to cut. And in our simulation in NX, it will use that shape for material removal. Uh, this is important because many insert shapes now are complex and the parameters that we have in NX don't always completely define the shape of the tool. But with MRL and the spun cutting feature, then you have an exact representation of your tool. Okay, at this point, <clears throat> let's go and look at the, the one final thing that MRL did for us. It created a library entry for that tool. So let's choose create tool. Actually, I think I need to switch my preferences first. And I'll just tell it that I want to go look in the MRL library.
So we'll search through indexable face modes. We could put other search terms in here. And here is our O50 demo face mode that we've created. Okay, let's create a quick operation using that tool. <clears throat> now let's have a look. <clears throat> so here's the parameter representation of the tool that comes through. Now let's switch to assembly. And we see the actual assembly of that tool as we built it in MRL. So when we hit the create button, then all that information from MRL was pushed across. It created the assembly, it created the parameter representation, and the programmers then can access that from the library just like they uh, have been doing in the past. But this time it's a much more complete library with uh, accurate parameter data that represents exactly the components that you use to create your tools with. <clears throat> okay, that's our quick overview this morning for MRL. We do have another session scheduled, and I want to uh, quickly go through what we're going to be discussing in that next session. You might be asking, well, where did the components come from? How do you take a uh, can of metal or ISCAR component and bring it into MRL so you can use it. Well, that's our, our tooling component library and we can import those tools and then use them directly in MRL. Uh, we also have a plan for dealing with situations where your part numbering scheme may be completely different than the vendors that you use. We'll explain that to you also. And we'll talk about guided component searches, which allow you then to take those vendor components and make sure that the insert you're putting into an arbor or the end mill that you're putting into a collet uh, actually fit and are, are compatible with those components. So at this point, we've just got a few minutes left and I wanna open it up and see if anyone has any questions they'd like to ask. No questions? Okay, Chris, I think we've completed our mission for today. Um, <clears throat> we'll invite you back for our next half hour session next month. <clears throat>